to use made pain. Club leases and assignments leave the original lease mostly unchanged. But what if that's not possible? How could a landlord be convinced to alter the terms of a lease to work better for a user? In this segment, we will explore lease buyouts as an exit strategy. It's clear for example that in some cases, the leasehold interest may or may not be of value to the lessee and may be of value only to owner. The relative position of contract and rent create these situations, but in other occasions, they are created by the realities of the user's business and the owner's investment objectives. For various reasons, either the owner or the lessee might want to sell their interest in the leasehold. Decisions about when and whether to sublease or whether to negotiate a lease buyout and who should do the buying are all linked. The above table shows owner and user motivations. They are not based on the leasehold economic value alone. The owner fears vacancy, while the user fears wasted space which costs money, and the risks associated with subletting. Thus, the timing of the lease, the relationship of the contract rent to market rent, and the user's business needs all contribute to pushing the pendulum to one side or the other. Examining the current market and owner and user motivations is important when determining whether to negotiate a lease buyout. For example, a tenant is interested to a different location. They currently are paying a flat rent of $200,000 per year on a net lease, and the lease expires in five years. The market rent on their space for a five-year net lease with no steps or other adjustments is $150,000 per year. Thus, the tenant is paying a lease premium of $50,000 per year. How much should they offer to buy out their lease if their cost of capital is 7%, which they will use as the discount rate? Because the tenant is paying a lease premium, the owner of the property will lose $50,000 per year if the tenant leaves early, assuming the space can be leased to someone for $150,000 per year. The tenant obligated to pay the extra $50,000 per year probably would be willing to pay the present value of this amount, discounted at the 7% cost of capital. The $205,010 reflects the fact that the tenant has a negative leasehold value because they are paying above market rents and would have to pay to be removed from the lease obligation. However, it should be noted that the lease obligates the tenant to pay the full $200,000 per year, and the owner may not be willing to accept only $205,010. Thus, the tenant may have to pay as much as the PV of the $200,000 per year for the remaining lease term. If the tenant can sublease the space for $150,000 per year, they would be losing $50,000 per year. Therefore, they should be willing to pay $205,010. Of course, it could take time to find someone to sublease the space. Plus, additional costs might be needed to put the tenant in the place, such as leasing commission and tenant improvements. The amount the tenant might have to pay likely depends on whether they can sublease and what they can negotiate with the owner. Another factor in the sublease is any owner motivation for allowing the tenant to terminate the lease early, such as accommodating another existing tenant's expansion needs or the desire to convert the building to a higher and better use. Many other economic and subjective factors can enter into this type of analysis. 